Um, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome Shanaz to our event. My life, my business, wish I was here. And as usual, as far as the introductions go, this is about really being fully present in your life and daring to enjoy everything that you're doing by staying fully present. Um, so, um, Shanaz, we have been talking about all kinds of things in the last month or so. Last time you spoke, you spoke about resilience. And um, last week I, I, I spoke a little bit about, I think that theme continued. It's also um, perseverance, um, especially when, when, when life throws you curveballs. So without further ado, Shanaz, I'm going to hand straight over to you. And uh, as usual, um, brimming with anticipation. Hi, sure. Thank you. So, um, so last week, um, you know, I was listening and it, it was so good. Um, you were talking about, um, you know, what happened when you had that accident and, um, you know, all the things that needed to kind of come into place. Um, and, you know, you, you also then spoke about um, your parents driving you around and um, or whoever. And yeah, I think your dad or someone and then you in the back seat, um, sort of laying down and, and you, you know, you kind of managed to do all the things that you were able to that you needed to do in that stage. And um, I kind of gathered that you had learned so much. In that time, probably um, things that you may not have learned if you hadn't to have that accident. Um, and and I also realized that in a sense you also slowed it down. Um, you know your your pace because you were you know kind of busy building your your business. And um, then in a, maybe your pace was broken and maybe you know you had to change things up a bit. So that reminded me of um, an, an article that I'm actually busy with. And um, it was actually, it's based on the slow movement. So I'm not sure if you've heard of the slow movement. Um, and so I want to talk a bit about the slow movement and philosophy today and how your life and business can benefit from that. So um, what is the um, slow movement? So the slow movement um really is about um it was started in 1989 by a leftist journal a journalist who protested um about a mcdonald's that was going to be opened up in rome and um so what actually happened was that um they were um it's the movement gained momentum because um, what they wanted to focus on then was actually move away from the corporatist, um, you know, sort of fast-paced, competitive efficiencies um, type of setup. Um, and and what they wanted people to do was was the, this idea of um, so it started off in the food industry, um, you know, in response to the McDonald's and the what they wanted was this idea of enjoying biodiversity, local food, and as I said, it was really a resistance to this idea of being quick efficient and competitive. Not to say that you can't be efficient any other way. But what they wanted to also focus on, when you think of like fast food, what they in turn wanted to do was this idea of focusing on discernment, on focusing on depth, um, you know, um, pleasure and generosity. Um, and, and so what then started to happen was this movement around the food industry and hospitality industry started to grow. And what they also wanted was um, they wanted to support small, organic, local artisanal food um, that was really good for the environment um, as opposed to genetically modified um, food. So, so kind of how does this kind of fit, <laughs> fit in with your life um, and, and what you do? Their emphasis really was on good, clean, and fair. So for them, good referred them to like seasonal and fresh food, clean products that don't affect the environment. Fair meant accessible prices and for services and products. And 
a big emphasis was placed on quality of living and even and even dying so they they then started to kind of call for less traffic addressing unemployment issues developing more green spaces supporting local farmers hospitality and this idea of neighborliness they also wanted to understand and and wanted us to look at revaluing quality the quality of our leisure time and then also for for those going into whether it's business or getting involved in a project they wanted they called on this idea of a slow immersion into the particularities of that particular context so what does this kind of all um, kind of mean so what they were thinking about was how do we reconfigure and engage in alternative ways of doing things and disciplines you know whether that's some um, um projects or stuff things that work or in our families in our life even um and and what they wanted to do was it was this response to um the current managerian uh, managerialism performance management and corporate culture which actually seems to have taken over all aspects of our life you know and all aspects of um you know our the world that we engage with um things like it i mean it's even taken over um aspects of leisure of education you know when it's actually education is supposed to be this learning process which you know it's not about quickly and efficiently you know even our leisure and the time that we spend shouldn't be about you know fast space um and and even art so what then happened was that this started to appeal to a range of disciplines and the slow movement and slow manifesto started to grow and so just for those who are like wondering about the slow stuff it's not necessarily about like literally going slow it can actually mean that but it's not necessarily so we're going to look at i thought let's look at a little bit at some of the you know um at the philosophy and and how can that really benefit us um so what the philosophy is based on is this idea that people and things come into being due to relationships and why i started to include this in my work because social work was also an area and research and education is an area that has is starting to grow um and develop the slow scholarship and slow um in, we call it slow social work but what why is this so appealing and why should this be so appealing to us is because when you start to understand our work lives and our home lives it all seems to be affected by corporate competition and um this idea of efficiency and managerialism and what you actually find is that um that there is then this need to look at alternatives because competition and effectiveness and fast paced um situations doesn't necessarily add up to quality and it's about understanding what is quality to us um in my field it's about how do i understand quality in terms of the amount of students i work with and how i work with my students and how i work with my patients and my clients or do i want to ensure that you know when i see patients that i want to see 10 patients within a period of you know whatever and i mean my sisters used to work at a public district hospital and for them it's all about the numbers can they see all of the 80 patients in a day and she got exhausted because for her um spending time with people on their health was more than ticking the boxes and more than needing to show her boss that she had finished or um she had seen 80 patients for the day um and so it is then in response to this idea of 
how you know um competition and fast paced um corporate life not and again not to say that 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 there's anything wrong but what they want us to focus on is the process of things rather than getting things done quickly so you know we used to hear these the saying oh enjoy the journey or oh, it's the process you know um and so this is literally that it really is about paying attention to the journey it really is about trusting the process and so in this philosophy in in the slow movement we come to understand what it, what does it really mean and how do we really you know um pay attention to the process how do we really what does it really mean to trust the process what they then started to understand was that trusting the process then for them means being joyful means looking and engaging in quality it also includes affirmation being curious that is this connection between nature and culture they want us to understand what sustainability is and deep connection is about they also then want us to think about um alternative ways of improving the quality of your life without the pressure that society and demands that society and the world sometimes whether that your work world places on you and also look at competition so in education we have this um you know these this um when we understand slow scholarship or we try to understand the um the competitive world out there is that actually this idea that if you work hard you get what you want that's not really in a sense what actually happens in our society often it's about you know who you know often it's about there are some unfair policies and practice out there that has occurred because we wanted to be fast and efficient um and we haven't taken the time to really understand what it is that um we want in our life or what it is that we want out of an education system for example so 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 in other words slowness and the slow movement how do we apply it to our life and business what um one of my professors actually she writes about it she to um, professor her name is professor bozelik and she talks about slowness is about rethinking space and time and how we inhabit them in a meaningful way and i really like that um it's about how do i engage with the time that i have with this person in a way that is really um meaningful but also you know how much time am i spending with this person is it sufficient time am i just focusing on the next 45 minutes or the next hour or does the situation means does the situation call on more time you know how and it it's you know it's about thinking or you know maybe with my one patient i can actually spend 20 minutes with and it can be really meaningful so how do i conceptualize time in my workspace and in my home life and personal space and this is also about balance how do i bring about that balance in my work life and in my home life when i think about the space and the time that i have what it's also about is they actually say it it's about doing less actually or doing what we do um in a more leisurely pace um being really engaged in activities which are worthwhile do we actually spend time thinking about the time that we spend on doing things how much of the time is actually you know worthwhile and beneficial um i've looked at some criticisms about our metric um you know our metric results the idea of a metric exam you know they spend all of that time and hours but how much of that knowledge that our matriculants gain this year are they actually going to use in their career how do we rethink time then how do you think rethink time in your own life what they also suggest that it's then about valuing the finer details 
of micro as well as macro context. So in other words, spending time actually, you know, they, they do say don't sweat the small stuff. However, there are times we do need to spend time looking at the finer details of the processes of the things that we do. Um, you know, not only the, the, the big, you know, not only looking at the details of big things, but small processes can make a big difference in our life. And so it does look at then, you know, how much time, um, am I focusing on only getting the big picture, but I'm not looking at the smaller picture that or or the finer details that may actually cause me to either waste time or cause me to not engage in a meaningful way and i think that that small time could be you know do you regard spending time with your family as important and how much time do you really spend with your with your family um so it's really looking at your life in the small detail of your life, the mundane things, but also looking then at the big things in your life. Um, and so f what that, what does that mean for a project that you're busy with? It actually means valuing the small detail of a project as well as the big process involved in the project that you are engaging with. And so in other words, it's really the opposite of quantity. And what they're saving, saying then that what we find and what they found is that quality is then better than competitiveness, efficiency, and quantity. And so um, what I also then want to um, kind of think about is that um, how I had to apply this in my own life was a research project. So I'm a qualitative researcher, and in a qualitative research, we look at, we try to understand the meanings of, that people give to their life, um, you know, or that's one of the main things, but it's in small numbers. So I won't re, I won't have 200 people that I will interview because I want to understand the meaning that maybe 15 people have instead of 200 people. And so this means that the kind of questions that I ask people will be very different to an, a survey that can see, say, 200 people. And so for me then, because I want to focus on the context and the, the, um, the quality of the person's life and the meaning, it does mean that I need to focus then on smaller numbers. I'm not able to turn out the bigger numbers that other researchers um, are able to do, or that sometimes even funders want. So what, how this process has really helped me is to think about um, um, some of the authors give advice as to how you can incorporate this into your life. So one of the ways is to pay attention to, they call it attentiveness, paying attention attention to the other ways of doing things and paying it um, um, the way of doing things and paying attention to other ways of being so so what this means is to allow yourself to wait on things to happen rather than rush ahead and so for example um, to deepen a relationship and and so on a project you know rather than rush ahead kind of wait until people contribute, um, you know, to kind of think about other ways of um, doing the project that could be as successful, that these other ways of doing and being is not necessary in competition with your idea. It's just another way. And, and to allow those things to kind of emerge. Then they also talk about responsibility. And, and this again is about detailed and careful reading of people and behavior. Um, so not assuming that you know everything about the person or the situation, but actually looking purposefully for new ways um, and new perspectives and trying to see the person's ideas 
from their lens. So you know how some of us can listen, but then we listen to respond or defend our position. I'm guilty of it, right? But it's actually putting it that, um, defending my ideas aside and really being open to responding to this person's um, new ideas where I'm really seeing seeing it through their eyes. And that's why it's that idea of responsibility with a dash in between. Another thing that they want us to look at is um, responsibility with the full word responsibility. And I love this because it says that it's not ours alone. So responsibility that any idea or project that you are engaging with or even a patient or a client that you are working with, it's not yours. It's ours. The collective is important. So um, as a process happens, we become entangled with people and things. And so even when we engage in our environment, we actually, it's not ours alone. We share the, the park with animals we share the beach with sea animals as well so it's not only ours it's theirs too in that way and so another way in which you can which they also want us to apply this is through is through curiosity being open to um, learning new ways and thinking about new ways and and what i what i really like is that when a Um, The author actually talks about um, making other people's subjugated knowledge visible. So what this means is when I am curious and I take an open stance to hearing from other things and other ways of being, I can uh, suddenly I may become aware of someone's strengths or someone's ability to do something. And in that way, maybe that wasn't known before because I wanted my way and I kind of was ready to defend my ideas. But because I took this curious stance, I can now suddenly become aware of the knowledge that they had, which I can make visible. And I can affirm that and say, you know what? I hadn't really thought about that. That's such a good way of doing it. Or I like your idea. I had my way of doing things, but I see that that could be a really good way. Or I didn't know that you knew how to do that or that was a strength. In that way, we kind of make their knowledge visible as well. Um, And another thing that they talk about is this idea to create conditions of trust. So when we are engaging in the slow movement, it's really important that we think of how can I create conditions of trust and not just assume that the people I'm gathering with or the thing that I'm doing with other people, they just trust me. Um, We often make that assumption. And what the slow movement wants us to do is to think about trust being long-term engagement with something. We, um, we trust then is being attuned to another person that the pattern of your engagement over this long period does not require you to risk then. So you can be vulnerable without risking. And Haraway, I love this term that she used. She talks about it and she says that um, it's when we stay with the trouble. So I'll repeat that again. And I need to sit with that because it's, it's when we stay with the trouble. So we don't hop out when there is no trouble, but we actually stay with the trouble. So I would kind of like to finish with that. And and I think um, this idea that um, when we are engaging in the slow movement and we want to benefit from it, it's even when we it's when we are engaging long term in a project or a situation where we actually stay even when the when there is trouble and we try and we help with the trouble. We are not alone in the trouble as well. So yes, so thank you. That's me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't even want to add anything <laughs> to be honest. You know, 
the uncanny ability that you have to to make everything dovetail um, so seamlessly it's 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 quite a talent um, and maybe you're doing it naturally or maybe you've learned how to do this but it's awesome in terms of how uh, you're managing to keep a, a conversation alive um, by introducing new well new emphasis of topics if that makes any sense so it just like it's one massive storybook from one chapter to the next and it just flows so easily I don't know if this makes sense to you, Shanaz, and I just want to say... Yes, yes, thank you. No, no, it does. And I think that I guess the idea was to also um, inspire others, but also inspire the book that you are busy with. And hopefully it will like jog your, you know, it's like, um, I, I often say it's like a buffet. So choose what works for you. You don't choose mm. everything if you want to behave at the buffet. <laughs> choose what, <laughs> you know, what, what you want to apply to your life <laughs> and yes. what you can it, it is it is so awesome, you know, um, where you ended it in terms of engagement, um, even when there are conditions that are not conducive. When, when we look at the situation, we kind of go, nope, uh, we begin to judge it like this is this is not great for me. I need to escape it as quickly as possible. But to stay in that situation, to, to even in that situation, to to slow it down friend of mine said, um, it's, I think it's a, a, a well-known therapeutic term <laughs> that um, where you need to stay in your mess, stay in your trouble and healing comes from doing all of those things, processing um, comes from all of this. And then, you know, just to say, um, you know, often when we talk about trusting the process, right, and um, really understanding that when you when you do trust the process of things knowing that it's not the the desirable outcome obviously is the destination but um, when you focus on on the process and 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 some of the words that you you described in terms of that definition it what does it really mean to trust the process and then you said everything that just triggered me but the, the words that that stand out for me is being joyful being joyful and uh, but yes shanas this was absolutely um awesome in the time you had to to describe what slow emotion means i mean <laughs> wonderful thank you very much a pleasure, Jacques. Um, yeah, so the slow movement for me is also then about, I, I think it can offer us lots of um, things to think about. And um, but we, as humans, we often want to bail out as soon as something doesn't benefit us, you know, mm. in any in any way. <laughs> so, um, and, and what they are saying is stay with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stay with the trouble. <laughs> Yes, so yeah. and, and that's that's where we're going to uh, leave it to our listeners to say, listen, despite the the trigger reaction, the impulse, choose to stay with the trouble, exercise your freedom of choice, and things like enjoyment, curiosity, deeper connections, all those things will begin to surface. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, until next time, uh, thank you thank for you. Julia, who, who ably supports us during this uh, recording. And, uh, yeah, until next week, uh, Shanaz, have a, have a fantastic week until we chat again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.